Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tracy Sandler Show on Believe, brought to you by FIVO. I am very excited today to be joined by the Bengals team reporter, Marissa Contepelli. The San Francisco 49ers are taking on the Cincinnati Bengals this week in Cincinnati for a game that's pretty important to both teams. Both teams coming off a loss, both mm -hmm. teams hungry for a win, and this is a big one. Marissa, welcome to the Tracy Sandler Show. Tracy, thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to join you and cannot wait for Sunday. Like you just said, I think it's going to be a fun one in Cincinnati. I think so too. And I will say, you know, I will admit this before the season started, and this is the beauty of football and how it all plays out. Looking at this Bengals game, it felt like, okay, good. They can put that in there as a W, which this <laughs> season I think we're finding more than any season is not true, no matter who mm -hmm. the team is. But the Cincinnati Bengals are obviously having a really good season. Joe Burrow, a potential comeback player of the year nominee. So that is exciting. I know he is dealing with a pinky injury, and which I say that, and it's a serious thing, but it's so funny when you say the word pinky. Because <laughs> I think in life we make that joke. It's like, oh, I can't go to work today. My pinky hurts. But for Joe Burrow, that's a very real thing. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And the good news for the Bengals is it's trending in the direction he is going to play on Sunday. He spoke with media on Wednesday and was just like, he doesn't foresee any type of setbacks with the uh, pinky. It's progressing every day. They are having having him limited. He did not practice Wednesday. He'll be limited the rest of the week just, just to give it extra you know, rest and making sure the swelling and everything goes down on it. But he should be playing on Sunday, barring any type of setback that hopefully does not incur. Well, that is good news. And I even think that's good news for the 49ers because you do want to play a team mm -hmm. at their best. And, and personally, I think it's good news because I'm a big Joey Burrow fan and, and I'd like to see him live. And I think he's really talented. So I'm pretty excited just about that in itself. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who doesn't want to see a reigning Heisman Trophy winner, national champion quarterback play? I mean, Joe Burrow has shown he's one of the best young quarterbacks in the game, and he's only getting better. So I, I think you're right on when actually wanting to see him play in person because he's, he's a total game changer. And just the strides that he has already taken in his second year has just been absolutely tremendous to see. And, and this offense and this Bengals team is a completely different team when he is out there leading the, the charge out there for them, obviously. But Tracy, like just to go back to kind of what you said before, I, I think the Bengals have surprised so many people across mm -hmm. the league. If you ask anyone in this building, there are no surprises about what they've been able to do and, and put out there on the field. But from the national perspective, a, a lot of people didn't have this team at seven and five going into the, this big matchup now with, with like you said, an, an NFC team, the 49ers team that probably had, you know, maybe had this one penciled in as a W to start the season off. But, but the Bengals have finally, you know, Last week was kind of an outlier in the sense that they played a really sloppy game against a very good Chargers team and, and just couldn't stop Justin Herbert uh, defensively when they needed to. But but outside of that, the Spangles defense has just been night and day from what we saw last year. And, and it's shown just with different types, the different type of performances they put up with against Baltimore and Pittsburgh and kind of what they've been able to do on the defensive side. And it's funny, the 49ers, one of it's funny, but the 49ers played the Bengals in 2019, and it was a very different <laughs> Bengals team. Schematically, yes. it may not have been a very different Bengals team, but personnel-wise, there have been a number of changes, and that's really helped this team. I want to get further into the game preview, but first, I would love for you to tell our listeners and those watching on YouTube, you are the Bengals team, report, team reporter. For people who don't know, what does that mean? What do you do on a daily basis? <laughs> Of course. Yeah. So I'm actually in my fourth season now with the team and have just, I feel like a jack of all trades at time. I host our weekly uh, studio show. I'm out on the video boards during home games on social. You can find me do, uh, doing interviews with players and coaches. Uh, I have a Contepelli's countdown each week where it's kind of a five things to know leading into the game, which is always a lot of fun to put together. And then, you know, I'm, I do a lot of uh, video editing and shooting. And so kind of writing, um, you know, I also write for our website as well. So it's really, um, which I'm sure, you know, in this business, you kind of have to be uh, multi-skilled at times. So definitely a jack of all trades and really any type of content creation that is needed from our team, I usually have uh, my hands involved with. I love, I love the Contepelli. Did you say Contepelli's five things? What did you, Conte, Countdown? Yes. Yeah, so Contepelli's Countdown. It, yeah, it's Contepelli's Countdown and it's like a five things to know kind of heading into that weekend's game. I love that. I love that because we do, I do five fun facts with the 49ers players where I talk to them and they give us like five 
things about them. Mm-hmm. We do it on Fangirl. So we're big in, into fives. And then we have something called the Friday Five. And it's your five things to know in sports <laughs> going into the weekend. So I love that. And there is something about that special number five that it just – it's perfect. There really is. It's easy to count. It's, you know, it can be quick if you needed to. Um, but then you're also getting five tidbits of information. So I, I think it's the perfect number. <laughs> so you mentioned the Bengals played a sloppy game against a very good Chargers team. The San Francisco mm-hmm. 49ers are coming off a game in which they played a terribly sloppy game, but against a not so great Seahawks team. And, you know, a division rival game, there is something also about when the 49ers play the Seahawks. It just everything goes out the window and it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter how good or how poorly a team is playing, but the foreigners are coming off a very sloppy, poor performance. They've had tremendous issues on special teams and they had pretty big issues on special teams against the Vikings, even though they did in fact win that game, they had trouble taking care of the football. They three turnovers, two interceptions by Jimmy Garoppolo. The defense played well enough to win, uh, which has been a problem. That hasn't been a problem, but in the 49ers losses, that has been a bit of a theme where the defense often is playing well enough to win and the offense just can't quite get it done. So coming into Cincinnati this week, it's important for San Francisco to get back to what had them on their win streak, which was being able to run the football. They had a real they had real trouble running the football the other day, taking care of the football, winning the turnover battle. What was interesting on Sunday is they actually did create turner, turnovers, but if you're going to create turnovers, mm-hmm. it's better not to also commit turnovers, and that's where things went seemed to go terribly wrong. They allowed that fake punt return for a touchdown the week before a kickoff return. So they have some work to do to clean things up. They also have been dealing with some injuries. Fred Warner is back, so that's great news for the 49ers defense. Debo Samuel did not practice Wednesday. Uh, Kyle Shanahan said he expected him to practice Thursday. We are recording this on Thursday morning, so it's before practice. So you guys will have to to keep an eye out on that and, and follow me on Twitter because I'll keep you posted on that. But, you, you know, they're dealing with that. But what would you say is the Bengals' biggest weakness going into this game and the thing that they're going to have to be the most careful of? Tracy, that's a great question. I mean, just going back to last week, and the Bengals are another team that is dealing with a lot of injuries, especially on the offensive side of the ball. They were without two starters on the offensive line and two key veterans in center, Trey Hopkins, and right tackle Riley Reef. And I think that was a big reason why there was was a lot lot of false star penalties, which was pretty Mm -hmm. uncharacteristic of this team um, that we saw last week against the Chargers. And they also struggled to run the ball. I mean, Joe Mixon has been on an absolute tear this season. He's uh, one of the top leading rushers in the NFL. He has scored a touchdown now in nine straight games and has just been so lethal on the ground. But something they didn't get going last week was the run game. And that's going to be a huge factor against this 49ers team is making sure they can actually sustain and get that ground game going. Because uh, I, while I don't consider that a weakness, if you're coming off of a game like they did just against uh, Los Angeles, and if they don't have those two starters back on the offensive line, as of right now, we do expect both Hopkins and Reef to be back in there. Um, they're both dealing with ankle injuries. Hopkins practiced on Wednesday. Um, Reef did not. So to be determined um, as Thursday practice is going to be getting, um, you know, rolling around here later this afternoon. But that's going to be a, a huge factor and something else that, you know, the Bengals had four turnovers last week, and one of them came from Joe Mixon. And up to that point, Tracy, he was leading the NFL in um, rushing attempts without a fumble. It was like oh, he had a streak going over 200. So typically really secure and, and really secures the ball, and that was just something that was kind of once again – it was a snowball effect, it seemed, for the Bengals that nothing was going right. And so if they can really kind of get back to where they had been rushing <laughs> rushing the ball the last few weeks, I think they're absolutely going to need that against this 49ers defense. They are for sure. And, and on the 49ers side, Elijah Mitchell is dealing with mm-hmm. he has a concussion and a knee injury. He has, it's knee irritation. He had an MRI. Everything was clear, but he is dealing with knee irritation. And that is a Pretty big loss. Trey Sermon is on IR with an ankle injury. I mean, the 49ers are starting to deplete at running back. So obviously very hopeful that not only will Elijah Mitchell be healthy, but that Debo Samuel will be healthy because Debo Samuel has been a big part of the 49ers run game. And they missed him last week. We saw George Kittle really step up in the passing game and, of course, have a very George Kittle-y game. Uh, (laughs) And he's obviously been such an incredible blocker. But, you know, these are important things for them too. It's interesting to me that both these teams dealing with this issue and an issue, but Mm -hmm. you know, these offenses, 
they need to get the run game going. It's it's so important for them. Uh, and it's funny when you say that stat that he was, you know, leading the league in ball security. It's so funny whenever I see that, like on Twitter and someone says, you know, he's gone, whatever, 200 carries without fumbling. I'm like, oh, you have just, now he just do pro <laughs> fumble. Now you just, but maybe better. He got exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm so glad you mentioned that um, the 49ers run game because, uh, yeah, Elijah Mitchell has, he's been such, um, you know, an explosive and vital part of that offense. And the Bengals defense, when you look at where they were in 2020, they were near last in run defense. And so they made that a priority in 2021 to really improve and bolster that defensive line. And Tracy, that's been one of the strengths of this defense is their ability to stop the run. Uh, Last week was another game where they held the Chargers in check on the run game. Of course, Justin Herbert was able to kind of do whatever he wanted passing the ball. But they've been so strong against the run and even against some of the top backs. I mean, they were able to hold Dalvin Cook when they uh, squared off with him week one. And even uh, Najee Harris uh, for Pittsburgh really limited what he was able to do. And so the fact that they have that is at least I think that's going to be a huge matchup kind of like is first off is Elijah Mitchell going to be able to go if he is. Are they going to be able to stop him and what that's going to look like up front? Because when the Bengals defensive line and Sam Hubbard, Trey Hendrickson, Larry Ogunjobi and DJ Reader, they've just been they've been playing so complimentary, especially, um, you know, Hendrickson and Hubbard on the outside that they've been able to kind of stuff the box. And because of that, Hendrickson has 11 and a half sacks. He's been able to get to the quarterback. So the pressure that uh, the 49ers could be seeing is, I think, just an absolute Huge storyline going in Bengals defensive line up against, you know, what the 49ers are able, if they're able to stop, stop that and kind of how that's going to play out on Sunday. Well, and that's going to be a very big challenge for the 49ers offensive line. Jimmy Garoppolo had a lot of time to throw on last Sunday at times, but they're very weak on the right side of the ball. Uh, you know, on the right side of the line. Uh, Mike McGlinchey is out for the season. Obviously Trent Williams on the left. Mm-hmm. Good protected no one's getting through there that's not the case on the right side and if you look at the safety you know tom compton just got you know i don't i don't mean to throw shade but it's just a fact tom compton just got you know taken down and and jimmy garoppolo was sacked in the end zone and on that one i don't you know i don't put that one on the quarterback Mm -hmm. interceptions were not good they were ugly terrible interceptions Uh, i think someone said who was he throwing to and my opinion was i think bobby wagner because he was that's who caught it. It looked like he was throwing right to him. But that is going to be a, a matchup that it's a very interesting matchup that you're talking about because this offensive line will have its hands full and they're going to need to give Jimmy Garoppolo good pass protection and give him time. Uh, the blocking in the run game has been spectacular because the Four Niners offense, everyone has bought in. You've got the tight ends blocking, you've got the wide receivers blocking, and that's what makes it work. And so I'm I'm less concerned about that, assuming Elijah Mitchell can go and they can kind of get back to where they were a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Pass protection is going to be a really big thing for San Francisco, and that right side of the line is very weak right now. And so, you know, we'll have to see where that goes. In terms of, I'm going now to the other side uh, for the 49ers, uh, their pass rush has been great. Their pass rush Sunday was great. We're going to talk about Nick Bosa in a second, but I think somebody the Bengals fans maybe not may not be as familiar with is DJ Jones, who has just been like a one man wrecking crew hmm. across that defensive line. And yesterday, some Fred Warner was asked about him, and he said he is making that money. I'll tell you that, and he really <laughs> is. He's just been like a wrecking crew. Aziz Al Shair, at linebacker who took over for Fred Warner, is also having a tremendous season. And then, of course, there's Nick Bosa who has 12 mm-hmm. sacks and who just, you know, it, the sacks are one thing, but just he's such a game changer and he is such a disruptor. I know that that's such a buzzword, but he really is a disruptor. But this week is kind of a little bit of a fun thing. Of course, once again, the field, it doesn't <laughs> matter, but he considers Joey Burrow a friend. I mm-hmm. imagine Joey Burrow considers Nick Bosa <laughs> a friend. So it'll be fun to see, you know, when he, a couple of years ago on Monday Night Football, and he sacked Baker Mayfield, and that was the famous thing with the flag and Bosa, and there was some, you know, there yeah. was a little jawing there. I imagine when, and I say when because it's inevitable, the man is just getting a sack pretty much every game when he sacks Burrow. It'll be fun to see the reactions from both players. <laughs> so I have a fun fact for you before getting oh, into more. Fun facts. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> and both relationships. So uh, before I came over to the Bengals, I was working in Columbus. I actually went to Ohio State and I was working on Columbus oh, and I no. covered Ohio State. So I, I am very Michigan. familiar. <gasps> oh, Tracy. Well, this is great. Marissa, <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. we're done. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> okay, well, we're just going to pretend that just that didn't happen. Um, yeah, we won't because go blue. But please continue. <laughs> yeah, at least, um, at least you guys are in the playoff, and it's okay. You know, one, once every ten years, it, it happens where y'all beat Ohio State. It's fine. It, it's whatever. But that was, nice. that was not kind. But, that was not kind. <laughs> but anyway, so I am so familiar with the Bosa brothers because oh, yes. I, I was talking. I was you know that we Ohio live and breathe Ohio State football and then I was also covering them as a media member so you know very aware of what Nick Bosa is able to do and what he brings to the table but Tracy it was funny on Wednesday one of the reporters asked Joe Burrow during his press conference just faced Joe but um <laughs> just faced one Bosa brother and now they're going to face the other Bosa brother like they're like which one would you like rather go up against if you know which one would you rather get sacked if you had to take a sack from either of them and joe just kind of laughed and he was like neither like they're great friends but like i don't want i don't want them anywhere near me so just it's absolutely great that you know those guys have such a close relationship and uh i think it was earlier this um i don't know if it was in the during camp or in um the off season at some point but they were able to get together. I remember seeing a picture of, you know, them together with Sam Hubbard because he's another Ohio State guy that they're all like really good friends. And so it's going to be so fun to see kind of maybe what some of that pregame jarring uh, is, is like between the two of them. And you're right, if if Nick is able to get into the backfield and, you know, get a sack on Burrow or get some pressure in his face, uh, is there going to be a little smile, a grin kind of? I'm intrigued to see what that, you know, what that's going to be like. We'll see the shrug. But it may be a big <laughs> struggle be a little. No, I hate, I hate to admit it, but I love I love the Bosa shrug. It's kind of the it's one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, I noticed and that Aiden Hutchinson is a, kind of adopted the shrug when he does when he's X, and so um, I can I love that about him. And I just that was really just an opportunity for me to throw out one more little Michigan tidbit. Right. <laughs> I see, see what you're doing here. Okay, that was just that was just an opportunity because I'm just I'm so happy because as you mentioned, once every ten years, you I really. Have to I have to like love it and enjoy it. Um, so one other area on the 49ers defense that I wanted to talk about briefly is we talked about the pass rush and, and how strong it is there. Place where they're probably going to struggle a little bit is in the secondary. It's been very up and down for the 49ers secondary this season anyways. They, last, they lost Emmanuel Mosley to a high ankle sprain on Sunday, and he was probably their best corner, very under the radar, but probably their best corner of the season. So expecting Dante Johnson and Josh Norman to be the starters. I know the rookies are going to be making a push to Yamandor Lenore and Iambri Thomas, but you know, I think that's a place where Joe Burrow and the Bengals can really expose San Francisco is throwing that ball far downfield, mm-hmm. hoping for a DPI, which is not out of the realm of possibility. And also just hoping for not great coverage. I hate to say it. I don't want to give away state secret secrets here, but I don't think it's a surprise. No, I mean, I think you're absolutely right with that. Joe Burrow leads the NFL in uh, touchdowns of 30 or more yards by kind of a landslide. I think he has 10 right now. The next closest quarterback, I believe, is either six or seven. So that's been a key part of what the Bengals want to do on offense is airing it out. And and a guy I'm really going to be watching closely is Jamar Chase. He had such a strong first few weeks to his rookie season. And over the last few weeks, he's kind of been having some struggles. He hasn't, um, you know, he's had a hard time with some ball security and some drops. We saw a, a really bad interception last week where the, they literally just took the ball right out of, from Jamar. He was trying to kind of double catch it, and boom, that should have been an t- easy touchdown, walk-in touchdown for him, and then it ends up in an interception and turnover for the Bengals. So seeing how he is going to be able to kind of have a bounce back, and I think this is this is the week it could happen, like you just mentioned, with the 49ers secondary, because – even if the 49ers try to key in on a guy like T Higgins, who's had a really solid few couple weeks now and has been kind of coming into more of his own in his second season, you focus in on T Higgins, then, you know, that's going to leave Jamar Chase or Tyler Boyd 
kind of open and exposed. So that's going to be, you know, a huge area for San Francisco to try to stop. And I fully expect Joe Burrow and the Bengals to, to try to use that to their advantage. And something we saw early on too, Tracy, this season is the Bengals would use their pass game to, to set up the run game. They had kind of gotten away from that when Joe Mixon was going off the way he had uh, over the last couple of weeks before last week. But it would not surprise me at all if if the Bengals came out kind of firing um, in the passing game and trying to, kind of went back to that where they were using earlier in the year is get the pass game to set up the run game and really then just kind of open up the whole playbook for them offensively. I think that's probably exactly what they're going to do. And if I were the Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals, and I am no offensive coordinator, but if I were the Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals, that is 100% what I would do. So I, I think that's what we will see. All right, so before I let you go, I want to do I want to do two things. One of them I didn't prepare you for, so I apologize in advance. But I think it'll be okay. Um, I love it. I'm Let's go. Do, and I'm going to ask you to do something I hate doing, but I'll do it too, so everybody will be on the same page. I want us to each give a score prediction, and each and I'm terrible at score predictions. I mean, awful. So you should rest assured. Whatever I say, it's going to be. You should be like, that won't happen. I feel much better about Sunday. Uh, and then the other thing I'd like us each to do is give our X factor for each of our teams mm-hmm. on who will be the X factor in the game. Would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? You are the guest, so you get to pick. All right. I'll go first for a score prediction. Okay. Um, I do think this is a game where the Bengals are going to get back into a rhythm and groove offensively. Uh, I Defensively, that's going to be the biggest question mark for me. I think it's going to be a close one, and mm-hmm. I kind of lean towards it being a more high-scoring game. So – I'm going to go, I think the Bengals do pull out the win on Sunday. I think they get last week that sour taste out of their mouth and kind of come out with a little bit, kind of kind of hungry and with some firepower here. So I'm going to go Bengals 31, 49ers 27. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it is going to be a close game as well. I am going to do something that my listeners are not going to like. And I would like to preface it by saying I would be more than happy to be proven wrong. But I felt for weeks that this was going to be a very tough game. I felt for weeks it was going to be a very close game. I, with the injuries, with the travel, and maybe the travel really isn't that big a deal. I actually think the game being later in the day now benefits the 49ers mm-hmm. somewhat. Uh, but I am going to pick Bengals 27, San Francisco 24. But again, guys, I am happy to be proven wrong. I don't need to be right all the time. This isn't an ego thing. So hopefully I will be. Um, and if the score is 27 to 24, either way, I'm going to take credit for my score prediction. I just want to take credit <laughs> because I'm so bad at them. So if it's 27, 24, no matter who wins the game, I don't feel like I pick it. Um, all right. Who is your Cincinnati Bengals X factor on Sunday? Okay. Can I give you two? Can I give you one from each side? Of the ball. Yes, only because you're such a nice person. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, so on offense, I do think it's Jamar Chase. I know I just kind of talked about him and kind of how he's been um, underperforming, struggling over the last couple of weeks, just not the same Jamar that we had kind of seen earlier this season. I think he is going to be a true X factor for this offense and just getting back into that deep, threat connection with Joe Burrow and, and for, for, for just Jamar to bounce back. Um, so really think Jamar is, is the guy on offense. And then defensively, I'm looking at linebacker Jermaine Pratt. The Bengals are very thin in the linebacker room right now. They're starting um, middle linebacker Logan Wilson, who is having a phenomenal second season. He's going to be out at least one week, possibly more. He had a dislocated shoulder um, in last week's game. But then also another linebacker, uh, Marcus Bailey, who was in last year's draft class as well. Well, he's dealing with an injury of his own, so to be determined what his status is going to be. So Jermaine Pratt being the veteran of that group, um, I think there's a lot of weight now on his shoulders. Um, the green dot is getting moved from Logan Wilson, who had had it, to now it's Jermaine Pratt is going to be the one um, community, making those calls out there on the field. So I think it's going to be um, a real test for, for him in that middle of the defense and what other, other backers are going to be around him because as of right now, it's to be determined. We don't know until we see how practice plays out Thursday and Friday and which guys are able to go and who's going to be healthy 
out there on Sunday. So I think um, on defense, there, there's definitely going to be a lot of eyes in the middle of the field. And, you know, hopefully Jermaine Pratt is going to have another step up huge game. He had a great one against the Chargers, posted his career high in snaps played. He uh, also had a career high in pro football focus grade. He also led all the linebackers in the league last week with posting a 90. So he's coming off of a good performance, but he's absolutely going to have to follow that back up with another strong one on Sunday. The green dot was moving around in San Francisco, too, because it was Fred Warner and then Aziz Mm -hmm. Al-Shayer took that over last week. Fred Warner is back, but like I said earlier, Aziz having a tremendous season. But I'm going to do my X Factor, and I'm also going to let myself do one on both sides of the ball because I actually kind of like that idea. So maybe that's something that goes forward. On offense, I'm going to give it to this one. I think will be – this is like a true X Factor if it comes true, so to speak. Um, Juwan Jennings, wide receiver Juwan Jennings, Mm -hmm. who's been – Absolutely incredible in the in the in blocking. Uh, for I said that so weird, but he's been an incredible blocker. <laughs> Let me try and say that all over again. He's really been an incredible blocker, and and I said earlier how the receivers at tight ends have really bought into Kyle Shanahan's offense, and it works if those guys are blocking and, and doing what they need to do. And Jawan Jennings has been absolutely incredible in that way. He also is really coming alive in the passing game and he's becoming a playmaker and he's really just so fun to watch and has so much fun playing football that I am going to say on Sunday that I believe he will be an X factor on the 49ers offense. Then over on the defensive side of the ball, I'm going to go with the much more obvious choice because I went less obvious on the offensive side of the ball. And that is going to, is going to have to be Nick Bosa. He's just Mm -hmm. so, and he's just such an incredible player. He said a few weeks ago, I believe it was after the Jacksonville game. He said, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this, which I would think to offensive coordinators around the league is like the most terrifying statement ever because oh, yeah. if he's just now he feels like he's starting to get the hang of it i can't even imagine what it's going to be like a year from now so and i i just I got chills when you said that i was just like oof like that's definitely not good for off opposing no. teams and he says it so nonchalantly in that like nick bosa way of talking where he's like mm-hmm. i think i'm starting to get the hang of this and so you could kind of miss it but if you take a second you're like wait what did he just say uh, and yeah. i think for him with them being friends I mean, he's going to want to sack him even more. You know, he doesn't want to do it every week, but he's going to want to get after him even more. And so that, and he'll be like back in Ohio. And anyways, that's, that's my feeling on that. So I would say Nick Bosa X factor, and I am going to actually take it a step further and predict two sacks from Nick Bosa. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I went, I just, I'm off the rails now, you guys, this is just, just, (laughs) it's just crazy. Uh, Marissa, thank you so much for joining me. This was so much fun. This was great. Tracy, thanks so much for asking me. And I'm just, you know, I'm glad we're both Big Ten girls. How about that? We'll just, we'll leave that at that. I appreciate that. Where can everyone find you? Give us your social handles. We'll tag you, but give us your social handles. Yeah. So on Twitter, you can find me at Bengals Marissa. And on Instagram, it's at Marissa Ray 19. Fantastic. If you guys like what you heard, and I know that you did, please make sure to leave us a five-star review and make sure to follow us on Instagram at Fangirl Sports Network. And I'll talk to everybody next time. Bye, all.